Now available to own on video and DVD. You're invited to a place where imagination roams free. Adventure is around every corner. And fun is in the air. Walt Disney Home Video proudly presents the Walt Disney Gold Classic Collection. Each month, one of your favorite Disney classics will be available to own on video and Disney DVD. Your whole family will love great movies like The Aristocats. Movie, Mama! They're the wildest cats in town. Everybody wants to be a cat! Yeah! The Fox and the Hound. I'm a fox. I'm a hound dog. Join two unlikely friends as they share the greatest adventure of all. Run to run! And celebrate the majesty of Pocahontas. Paint with all the colors of the wind. You can own a different Disney classic on video and Disney DVD every month. All part of the Walt Disney Gold Classic Collection. Imagination for a lifetime. Coming soon to own on video and DVD. Ten years ago, a mermaid dreamed of life on the land. I've never seen a human this close before. Now her daughter dreams of the sea. You know what? Sometimes I even pretend I have fins. The Little Mermaid 2, Return to the Sea. Get ready for a story unlike any other. This is the only way. Melody can't know about merpeople or Atlantica. It's an adventure you'll never forget. What's happening? Melody! <laughs> Walt Disney Pictures proudly presents an all-new full-length animated feature. I know this necklace means something. If no one's going to tell me, I'm going to find out for myself. The Little Mermaid 2, Return to the Sea. Premiering only on video and Disney DVD. I'm too old for this. Walt Disney Pictures proudly presents <laughs> The Tigger Movie. Discover the adventure. Come on, hurry it up. No time for dawdling. And believe in your imagination as Walt Disney Pictures takes you back to the place that's inside all of us and lives in the hearts of Rue, Eeyore, Piglet, Tigger, and Winnie the Pooh. The Tigger Movie. Coming to video. Help! Woody was kidnapped. What are we gonna do, Buzz? Use your head. But I don't want to use my head! Hold on. The toys are back in town. <laughs> and just trying to get home. My tour guide Barbie! I'm a marriage spot, I'm a marriage spot. In one piece. <laughs> Tom Hanks, Tim Allen, Toy Story 2. Ride right like the wind, Bullseye! Oh, no. Coming soon to video and Disney DVD. Good job!
way to go. Fantastic. Awesome. Excellente. All right. Nice going. That's it. Cool. That's right. All right. That's it. Cool. Good job. Cool. Excellente. Congratulations, you got them. A Goofy Movie, a read-along story. It was the last day of school, and Max was late. Oh no, Max cried. Suddenly, Max's dad, Goofy, burst into his room, wrapped in towels. Morning, son, Goofy called cheerfully. I'm running late, Dad, Max said as he rushed to leave. As Max headed out the door, Goofy handed him a brown paper bag. Maxie, you forgot your lunch, Goofy said. Then he kissed Max on the cheek, just as a group of his classmates went by. They all laughed at Max. Max worried that his classmates thought of him as Maxie the Geek and Goof of the Week. He was worried that he'd grow up to be like his dad, and Max didn't think Goofy was cool at all. Max had a secret crush on Roxanne. He thought she was the prettiest girl he had ever seen, but that she probably didn't even know he existed. But Max had a plan to improve his image, and his best friends PJ and Bobby were going to help him. Max planned to give a very special performance at the morning assembly. He was going to appear as his favorite music star, Powerline. Max's performance instantly won over the audience, especially Roxanne. Suddenly, the music stopped. As the angry principal snapped off Max's Powerline visor, someone in the audience shouted, It's the Goof Boy! Everyone gasped. Max was in big trouble. Sitting outside the principal's office, Max didn't see Roxanne. I liked your dance, Roxanne said shyly. The more he talked to Roxanne, the more courage Max found. I was sort of kind of thinking that maybe... You'd go with me to Stacy's party? 
Max stammered. Well, Roxanne replied shyly. I was sort of kind of thinking that I'd love to. The angry principal called Goofy at work. If I were you, Mr. Goof, the principal shouted, I'd seriously re-evaluate the way you're raising your child. This might be the beginning of a life of crime. Oh, not my boy, Goofy protested. The principal slammed the phone down. Goofy was worried about Max. They weren't pals the way they used to be. Then, Goofy had an idea about how to strengthen their father and son bond. He decided to take Max on a fishing trip to Lake Destiny. Even though his performance as Powerline had gotten him into trouble with the principal, the other students loved it. They thought Max was cool. And Roxanne liked him too. She was going to Stacy's party with him. Max was on top of the world until he got home. Going somewhere, Pop? Max asked, seeing his dad loading up the car. Sure am, pal Rooney. I'm taking a vacation with my best buddy, you. Max couldn't believe his ears just when things were finally going right. Goodbye, hopes. Goodbye, dreams. Goodbye, Roxanne, Max muttered. Roxanne! What was Max to do? He had Goofy stop at Roxanne's house. Make it quick, Maxie boy, Goofy said. We've got to put some road behind us. Max explained about his surprise vacation to Roxanne. She was disappointed. I'm sure I can go with someone else, she sadly told Max. But Max didn't want Roxanne to go with someone else. He panicked and blurted out a lie. A big lie. Max told Roxanne that Goofy was taking him to the Powerline concert in Los Angeles. The more Max jabbered, the bigger his lie got. I'll wave to you when we join Powerline on stage for the final number. I'm in deep sludge, Max thought as he headed for the car. On the road, Goofy was happy as a lark. Max sat silent and sullen. Not only was he on a vacation that he didn't want to be on, he had just lied to Roxanne. They pitched a tent in a campsite under the pine trees. Max was still upset and angry with his dad. Goofy was sad and confused. Suddenly, a deluxe RV pulled up at the campsite. In it were Pete and PJ. Max was sure glad to see PJ. PJ told Max what a celebrity he was back home. Everyone had heard that he was going to the Powerline concert. Goofy took the reluctant Max fishing. He tried to teach him a fishing move called the perfect cast. To Max, it just looked like a weird dance. But the only thing Goofy managed to hook was the fierce Bigfoot. <laughs> Roaring and snarling, Bigfoot chased Max and Goofy back to camp. Pete frantically packed up and quickly drove away. Finally, Bigfoot trapped Goofy and Max in their car. Somehow, Goofy managed to fall asleep. Frustrated, Max sat back in his seat and kicked the dashboard. The glove compartment popped open, and 
Goofy's map sprang out into Max's lap. Looking at the map, Max saw that their route would soon come to a junction. One road would take them to Lake Destiny, the other to Los Angeles. Max drew a new route on the map that would lead them to LA, the Powerline concert, and a lot of trouble. The next day, Goofy gave Max the road map. Goofy thought that by letting Max navigate, he might enjoy the trip more. You can pick all the stops from here to Lake Destiny, Goofy smiled. Now that they were really sharing the trip, Goofy and Max started to have fun. Max almost forgot about Roxanne, Powerline, and his very big lie. That night, they stopped at the Neptune Inn. Pete and PJ were staying at the Neptune Inn too. Max told PJ about how he had changed the map and was navigating their course for Los Angeles instead of Lake Destiny. Max and PJ didn't know that Pete was listening to them. Later, Pete told Goofy about the conversation between Max and PJ. Your kid's duping you, Pete chuckled. You're heading straight for L.A., pal. The next morning, Goofy and Max drove down the road in silence. When they reached the junction, Goofy gave Max a chance to make the right choice. Which way, Maxie? Goofy asked. To the right or to the left? Max directed Goofy to the left, toward L.A. Goofy was heartbroken and angry. Goofy pulled off the road into a scenic lookout and stopped the car. He stormed away, looking off at the view. Max had never seen Goofy so angry. He decided that it was time to tell his dad the truth. In frustration, Max kicked the car tire and leaned against the rear bumper. The car began rolling away down the hill. Max and Goofy chased the runaway car and managed to catch up with it and get inside just before it plummeted into the raging river below. As father and son floated down the river atop their car, they had plenty of time to talk. I'm not your little boy anymore. I've got my own life now, Max told Goofy. I know that, Goofy replied. I just wanted to be part of it. As their journey downriver continued, Max told Goofy the whole story. Goofy looked thoughtfully at Max and said, I guess the only thing for us to do now is Get you up on stage with this power line fella. In LA, they arrived at the theater where they found the backstage crew unloading equipment for the power line concert. Hidden in instrument cases, Max and Goofy were carried right in. Backstage, Goofy accidentally got trapped inside a strange contraption. Suddenly, it began to rise. Goofy found himself on stage right beside Powerline himself. Goofy didn't know what to do. Remembering the weird dance he recently saw his dad perform, Max yelled, Do the perfect cast! Goofy began performing the motions of the perfect cast. Powerline continued his song and followed Goofy in the strange dance. Then, Max joined Goofy and Powerline. There was no doubt about it. Max's dad was very cool. Back home, everyone at Stacy's party watched excitedly as Max danced on television. When they got home, 
Goofy and Max's first stop was Roxanne's house. Max told Roxanne the whole true story. Why would you make up something like that? Roxanne asked. I just wanted you to like me, Max said quietly. I already liked you, Max, Roxanne smiled. From the very first time I heard you laugh, a uh, yuck. Their conversation was interrupted by a loud boom. <laughs> Max looked out and saw that the car had exploded and Goofy was gone. Then Goofy crashed through the roof of Roxanne's porch. Roxanne, I'd like you to meet my dad, Max said proudly. Gentlemen, this is Mambo number five.
Jump up and down and move it all around. Take your hand to the sound, put your hands on the ground. Take one step left and one step right. One to the front and one to the side. Clap your hands once and clap your hands twice. And if it looks like this, then you're doing it. A little bit of Minnie in my life. A little bit of Mickey by her side. A little bit of Don Lowe's all I need. A little bit of Daisy's what I see. A little bit of Pluto in the sun. Do we do we do we can't go wrong. A little bit of Goofy everyone. A little bit of him makes life so fun. A little bit of Minnie in my life, a little bit of Mickey by her side, a little bit of Donald's all I need, a little bit of Daisy's what I see, a little bit of Pluto in the sun. somewhere pop sure it's a vacation with me and my best buddy donald duck no silly with you uh, it's goofy give me a big stop goofing around in an outrageous full-length animated feature we'll spend some real quality time together i think i'm gonna be sick walt disney pictures presents come on this is gonna be fun. The story of a father who couldn't be closer. What's the spirit, Maxie? Hey, God, this is embarrassing. To driving his son crazy. Ah. This is pathetic. Now, they're getting a crash course <laughs> in becoming best friends. It's Bigfoot! Could you back up a bit, Mr. Foot? Uh, you're out of focus. <laughs> This spring, one of Disney's favorite classic characters lands at theaters in the most hilarious It's the Leaning Tower of Cheesa <laughs> and hippest animated musical comedy ever. A little smoke kid. <laughs> A goofy movie. Morning, son. Dad. It's hard to be cool when your dad is goofy. Just like I did at your age. Please don't say that, Dad. 